In this episode, we're joined by Mohammed, who's developed a 3D MRI brain segmentation tool with his research team using TensorFlow.js that works live in the browser. First though, Mohammed, tell us more about who you are. Hi Jason, uh, thank you for having me on your channel today. Uh, as you said, my name is Mohammed Masoud. Uh, I had my uh, PhD uh, degree in computer science from Georgia State University. Uh, uh, where I develop, developed my uh, uh, research expertise at that time in uh, the domain of uh, image processing and machine learning. Uh, after uh, my PhD, I uh, joined Emory uh, University School of Medicine uh, as a research associate. Uh, so I extend my expertise at the time for the domain of uh, uh, computational pathology. Later after that, once I uh, uh, I joined uh, Georgia State University, the Center of uh, Neuroimaging and the Data Science. Uh, we started to develop uh, our print shop tool uh, that uh, can uh, do a 3D segmentation in the browser uh, that we will discuss today. So that sounds amazing. Uh, do you have a demo to help our viewers understand what's going on here? Yes, we have a demo for uh, printshop.org. Uh, so you, you just need to type printshop.org in the browser uh, to load the demo. And uh, the demo is a very simple interface, as you can see. Uh, so we have on the left hand uh, a viewer that can show the original MRI data. And in the right hand, we have the segmentation result. And the segmentation result here actually is showing us a very simple task in neuroimaging, uh, which is gray matter, white matter uh, segmentation result. So the gray matter actually, as we can see here, is the original, is the outer region in the brain. Uh, and this region actually have like a function that it can process the information in the brain. And the white matter in the middle here actually is a, a region that have uh, is rich and high, have a high density of uh, nerve fibers which are actually responsible for the communication between the gray matter regions. Uh, so if we see, if we want to take uh, uh, or see our uh, tool in action, we can actually browse and select our nifty file. And in our nifty file format now, we can actually doing uh, some uh, process on the raw data that we have uh, now uh, in the browser. So we have a list of models that we can select one of them. Uh, so we have like three main tasks here, two uh, for the brain extraction and brain masking and one for the brain segmentation for the green matter and white matter. So uh, if we run now, we will select the right one to see it and run the model uh, or the inference here. We can see actually it have a good speed in this machine. Uh, which is actually the average machine and uh, we actually have the three stages now we have a pre-processing stage that uh, uh, we need to normalize the MRI uh, in this uh, stage and then we feed it to the inference model and then after the inference model we're doing like a post-processing stage that we remove any noisy regions uh, from the outputs and we can yeah it come it will come now with the uh, with the results uh, these results actually uh, it take maybe from 25 to 30 seconds on this machine uh, to come out. And we have also the option to save our, uh, if we satisfy with this result, we can actually compare between both and we can see here. Uh, both wow, of them actually that. have a good, yeah. yeah it have a good <laughs> and now you're able to go through the brain different layers, I guess, and, and in real time yeah, segment. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So nice. you can see uh, the segmentation accuracy in this case, and you can save the results if you're satisfied with them. Very cool. That's awesome. So I'm curious to find out a bit more about the end users of your system here and what they might use this tool for. Yeah, this is actually a great question, uh, Jason. So uh, actually, we make this tool very simple in order to uh, uh, make our end user, which they can be like a professional doctors or uh, a medical profession in general, that uh, they maybe don't go, want to go so deep with the machine learning and this stuff. They just need a simple interface to see how sure. the results can be uh, uh, come out from the accuracy of the models. And then they can decide if they can actually go in, uh, in more details about uh, our tool and uh, how they can actually collaborate with us in the future to make uh, actually uh, their research actually have more insights using our uh, uh, deep learning models. That's awesome. Now you mentioned there, um, there are a number of models that you're using. I'm just wondering, are, are these custom models that you've made and then converted to run in JavaScript via TensorFlow.js or um, are these off the shelf models? Maybe you can just explain those a little bit more too. Yeah, so actually, if we look in the overview of our uh, our uh, 
our print shop architecture here we can see that uh, we can actually uh, take our model uh, that is trained in uh, a framework like PyTorch or uh, Keras TensorFlow and then we convert it to TensorFlow GS and then use it in our model so uh, this is actually the process that we started at the beginning but uh, where there is uh, something that is uh, very uh, vital here important that the lighter the model the important that the, the, the browser can be work properly when, uh, when we make the inference step so uh, what we need actually to do here uh, we need actually to align for a framework or a architecture that is light in the beginning we have actually what we call MeshNet architecture so the MeshNet architecture actually is a very light uh, um, deep learning model that can actually use in the segmentation in our browser here and it have a very competitive result actually uh, comparing to UNET so uh, actually when we compare between both in the accuracy uh, we can find that uh, MeshNet uh, have a very competitive accuracy it uh, like uh, for this task uh, gray matter white matter it can he can uh, the, the model can uh, achieve like 0.9 uh, uh, 56 uh, micro dice in the in the browser in the output and for the for the unit actually the difference is not that far between both of them it's only 0.0 uh, 06 micro dice, uh, which is very small value, but the big advantage of MeshNet here actually is the speed. It's nine times uh, faster than UNET, and okay. the, the, <laughs> the size also of MeshNet here is very small. Actually, it is maybe less than one megabyte uh, compared to 288 megabytes uh, for UNET. So wow. yeah, yeah, so actually, mm -hmm. yeah, this is actually makes make unit actually is, uh, is very hard or maybe challenging to use it in the browser it it have a very high probability that it can fail in the browser uh, it will end the browser failing or freezing or uh, or cannot respond anymore now this is a pretty niche area but if viewers want to try this out for themselves where can they go yeah uh, so actually print shop is a free license and uh, open source code that is available in github we give also more explanation uh, so uh, i'm sharing now uh, our uh, github uh, repo for uh, the project as you can see that uh, we give here uh, more actually uh, explanation uh, in the wiki part so the end user once they come to this uh this page actually they can find uh how actually they can load their model how actually mm -hmm. they can do uh their normalization stuff and how actually uh, they check their performance or what is the system requirement that can make this uh, uh this actually this application or this tool work in their browser and uh, it's important actually to mention also that uh, print job uh, actually have uh, a funding uh, from the nih uh, we have a grant that supports this project and uh, this project actually come under the no planner project which is uh, uh, the father project of this uh, uh, tool and um, um, we are we will put all the links uh, that uh, actually can take our user uh, to the demo and the github in the description Perfect. section wonderful yes so do check that out we'll put those links in the description after the show and click those links and find out more information this is really amazing work. I'm curious to know your thoughts on where this might go in the future, maybe. So, yeah, I guess uh, our next step here will be to extend the model zoo uh, that we have, and we can increase also the number of segmentation uh, regions in the brain. Uh, so we have uh, more insights into the brain in this case. Uh, we saw actually there is a potential for TensorFlow.js uh, to perform such a type of tasks in the browser. And uh, we believe uh, there is nothing actually uh, can prevent uh, applying uh, this amazing machine learning library uh, into another also big medical images such as histopathology images or microscopy high resolution images. So uh, yeah, I guess making machine learning available in the browser that actually can make uh, on the on the user side can actually uh, enhance uh, our uh, the browser or the the application uh, the machine learning application uh, scalability and the privacy uh, shareability sure. and also it can make it actually more uh, popular with time yeah 
That, that's really interesting, actually, because I've seen those, um, obviously, this might not be medical grade, but I've seen people, like, experiment with, like, USB microscopes that they can connect to the computer, and then you could, you could analyze, like, blood samples, or whatever it might be, and kind of get real-time segmentation coming back, or something along those lines, or object detection, even, for things you're trying to find in those samples. So lots of potential here, for sure. Now, do let us know in the comments below how you might use tools like this in your industries in the future. I'm sure things like 3D segmentation could be useful beyond just the medical industry, too. And with that, thanks Mohammed for joining the show and I look forward to seeing this project grow. <laughs>